Welcome to the congregation of Yahweh. We're here today to worship Yahweh in spirit and in truth. At the congregation of Yahweh in Panama City, Florida. Yahweh's pouring out his spirit on his people in this day and age that we live. We're here to receive his blessing. We send out our greetings to those on the uh, internet uh, program that you will be blessed by the scriptures that we read and the spirit of Yahweh bless you and, pour, uh, and be poured out upon you. Today I want to talk about Israel today. The Bible speaks a lot about Israel. A lot of people uh, in the general population of the world uh, have different ideas of what Israel is and uh, most of it is bad news that they talk about because they're unlearned. But the scripture speaking about Israel uh, in, in the uh, context of Yahweh's people. In Isaiah chapter 2 and verse 1. Isaiah chapter 2 and verse 1. This is what Yeshayahu, the son of Amot, saw concerning Yehuda and Jerusalem, and said, and shall happen in the latter days that you, the mountain of the house of Yahweh, shall be established on the top of the mountains, and shall be raised above the hills, and all nations shall flow into it. Now this has not been uh, accomplished yet, but it's the prophecy that Yahweh has made. And Yahweh himself made this uh, prophecy through his um, prophet Isaiah. Isaiah wrote what Yahweh spoke. And so therefore he is talking about Israel. And I think the population today really needs to get an understanding of who Israel is to understand the scripture. Many people do not understand the scripture because they have customs and traditions that they learn about uh, with scripture attitudes, and it does not make sense. But we go and, and, uh, and read the scripture as what it's talking about in the third verse Chapter 2, Isaiah chapter 2 and 3. Many people shall go and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of Yahweh, to the house of the Elohim of Yaakov, and he will teach us his ways, and he will walk in his path. For out of Zion the law shall go forth, and the word of Yahweh from Jerusalem. Now see, th this is talking about Yahweh's will for the people Israel. And when he accomplishes uh, this uh, prophecy, and this is a prophecy, what it means is it's history written in advance. So it's probably even past our uh, existence. But see, we need to understand too that if we look back at history, it has a common thread as it comes through the nations. And what's unique about Israel is that it's not one little nation that was established in Palestine in the wilderness about uh, 5,000 years ago and it came to an end and it no longer exists. Yahweh intends Israel to exist forever into the millennium kingdoms. He says, He shall judge between the nations and shall decide concerning many peoples. See, Yahweh is interested in many people. People have this idea that they need to divide themselves. Even in our governments today, we're divided with what we think is right. All the people has got a different idea of what is right. 
and but uh, but Yahweh wants us to understand that his judgment is what's going to rule now we're talking about Yahweh fourth verse he will judge between the nations and will decide concerning many people Yahweh is interested in many people. He said, They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Now this is yet to come. We're in the uh, uh, present time lifting up our swords, lifting up our war machinery. We are divided in among the nations, and uh, and so we are waiting for Yahweh to bring this about. In verse five, he said, "House of Yaakov, come and let us walk in the light of Yahweh." See, he is calling the people today to come to him, and let us walk in the light. Do not be in darkness. Religion can be darkened. Every religion is contrary to the other. One religion fights against another. One has a different doctrine than another. And so therefore, there's darkness there. But he says, come to Yahweh. Come to the scriptures. And walk in the light. That is what is uh, required of us if we come to the understanding of of the scripture. Isaiah 2 and 6. For you have forsaken your people, the house of Yaakov, because they are filled from the east with those who practice divinations like the Philistine, and they clasp their hands with the children of foreigners. Now this is a description of the nations today. How they are uh, guided by false doctrines, by uh, they try to uh, practice divination to gain understanding. They advertise it on television. They even have shows. The major shows it is nothing but filled with divination, where people are, are trying to divine their way into a better uh, light, and yet it's total darkness. He says their uh, land is full of silver and gold. They're talking about this uh, country is broke. But yet we have uh, been prophesied that this country has plenty of gold, uh, silver and gold. The only thing is that it's not controlled to do the benefit of the people. He says, neither is there any end to their treasures. We have treasures that haven't even been unlocked yet. But yet we can't do it because of the wrong uh, uh, rules that we're having to go by. We need to uh, pray that Yahweh bring his kingdom on so we can enjoy that. He said their land also is full of horses. Neither is there any end of their chariots. And this basically, a chariot was a war machine. Now you could use it for a vehicle to ride in and we, do, we have a roads full of chariots. But you can have roads full of war machines too. And so he says here, he says their land is full of idols. Where are the idols? Oh, I wouldn't bow down to a doll. You know, that's what they say when you ask them about uh, their idolatry. They, they try to be above, they're educated to where they be above idolatry. But idolatry compasses a lot. It compasses the idea that you worship the country that you live in. You can worship the church that you go to. You can worship the college that you were educated in. You can worship the customs of the people. And that's what's happening to the, uh, the people in this generation. We worship customs more than we worship Yahweh. And we don't worship Yahweh because we don't like to be ruled by them old Ten Commandments. You know, it's been said that he knew that we couldn't keep those commandments, so he did away with them, and uh, we are living under grace. I've heard that all my life. But people don't understand the word grace. You have to define grace. It's a very good word to 
for, for, for the benefit, but it is not the license to sin. They need to think about that. He says they worship the work of their own hands. And that is common among the people. Not only in this country, but every country. No matter how primitive it is or how sophisticated it is, they worship the work of their hands. That which their own fingers have made. And you know, when you uh, see some of the designing designer clothes or designer furniture or all kinds of uh, uh, stuff that's sold on TV that people pay big money for, you can see that they uh, were crafted with their own fingers and that's worship. He goes on to say, man is brought low, verse 9, and mankind is humble, therefore don't forgive them. Now this is Yahweh speaking through Isaiah. Prophetic insights. We need to get the insight of the prophets. Seeing events from the heaven throne room. See the heaven's throne room is what controls what's going on. And he is allowing mankind to go to the extent to where he can uh, be saved. In Jeremiah chapter uh, 29 and verse 10, For thus saith Yahweh, When seventy years are completed at Babel, I will visit you and establish my good word toward you and bring you back to this place. Now this is Jeremiah speaking to uh, Israel when they were carried away in to captivity into Babylon. See, they were in Babel. And he said they would come back. And this is one uh, of the proofs that Yahweh does things timely. He said he would bring them back in, seven, in 70 years. And through Ezra and Nehemiah, you can read those two books and you can find out that this was accomplished but here's what he has to say in verse 11 he says for I know the plans I am planning for you Yahweh already has his plans planning for us and it started back then and it's going to continue until it's finished and we know that it's still yet to be finished he says the plans of peace and not evil Right now, we don't have the plans of peace We're operation. We have evil operating because there's trouble in every corner of the earth. Mm -hmm. And in just recently, the, the shootings of little children in several different places, and it's scattered all over the country now. It's, it's not just one episode and it's over with. It's almost daily you hear about something happening. We got one right here in Midland City, Alabama, just a... Uh, a, a few miles up the, the, the highway and the man's holding a hostage a little five year old uh, mentally retarded child being held hostage autistic, autistic or whatever and so it, it's a tragedy evil is being played out he says to give you a future and an expectancy see there is a future and the expectancy should be for good. This should finally be uh, finished and be over. He says, then you shall call on me. See, I think our problem is that we haven't really called on him as a nation. Now, there's a few individuals that are seeking Yahweh in every little uh, town or every uh, country. There are people seeking Yahweh. But here's what he wants for us to do collectively. He says, And shall come and pray to me, and I shall listen to you. Think what would happen if America would just say, All right, we've had all we can take. It's over. We can't go any further like we're going. Let us pray. And the nation begin to pray. Yahweh would hear. He says, and you shall seek me. 
It's time for this nation and the other nations in the world to seek Yahweh. He says, and find and shall find me. We shall find him when we seek him. Not until. And I shall find, uh, find no, and I shall be found by you. Yahweh saying that he will be found by us when we seek him. Declares Yahweh. And I shall turn back your captivity. Now, this is another thing. Captivity. Are we in captivity? Now, a lot of people say, no, we are free. We are Americans. And then, you know, the Israelites says that we were sons of uh, Abraham. So we've never, uh, we've always been free, you know. But Yahweh put them in captivity. And we have not yet ended that captivity. We are still in the captivity until Yahshua brings it about. He shall and shall gather you from the Gentiles and the Gentiles are the nations. They're not people who are not Jews. See, that's a confusion. Use that Gentile word as nation because that's what it means in the, in the Hebrew. It comes from the Hebrew word goi. And from all the places where I have driven you. Now, we have been driven. We are the most driven people in the history of the world at this generation. We are the extension of the driven people. And if we go back and really bear down and study our westward migration uh, curriculum, we can find out that the people who are in this country are from through every nation that has been since the cradle of civilization we have been driven in the western migration pattern and Yahweh accepts the, the responsibility for driving us he says uh, I'll read it again and I shall be found by you declares Yahweh and I shall uh, turn back your captivity and shall gather you from all the Gentiles and from all the places where you have, uh, where I have driven you, declares Yahweh. And I shall bring you back to the place from where, uh, from which I have exiled you. See, Yahweh exiled the people. And in uh, Jeremiah, Yahweh speaking in the first person told us that he was going to put us back where he exiled us from. So that will be uh, his responsibility to do it. Now, in Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy was considered a book that Moses wrote. But Deuteronomy is a repetition of the Torah. That's what Deuteronomy basically means is there collectively what's written in the uh, other five books of the Torah is analyzed here and here's what he's saying and he's speaking about the children when you bring forth children and grandchildren and shall grow old in the land and shall do corruptly and make a carved image in the form of whatever and shall do what is evil in the eyes of Yahweh your Elohim to provoke him. Now, Deuteronomy uh, chapter 4 and verse 25. Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 25. So, the carved images, the customs, the traditions that we have uh, accumulated, they provoke Yahweh. That's what some of the reasons we're in the trouble that we're in as a nation. We fight wars against each other. We fight wars against our neighbors. All kinds of stuff. Our economy is uh, gone haywire. We need to think about who is the one that has been provoked. He said, I shall call the heavens and earth to witness against you on that day that you soon completely perish from the land which you pass over the Jordan to possess 
you do not prolong your days in it, uh, but are completely destroyed. Now, most people will say, well, that's Deuteronomy. That's an old book in it, its history, old ancient history, and it's uh, obsolete. But it's not. Yahweh prophesied this to Israel. And Israel has continued to exist. Not as a single nation under one flag, but Israel as a population still exists. Israel is who this book is written to. Israel today. That's the title of this, uh, this uh, uh, sermon. Where is Israel today? In verse uh, 27, And Yahweh shall scatter you among the peoples. If you can think about this over a 5,000 year period, or a 2,000 and something year period, how we uh, arrived at where we are today, our ancestors has been scattered. We can track them back uh, to Europe. We can track them from Europe back, back through Europe back to the uh, uh, cradle of civilization. If we uh, do that and, and understand it. But most people ignore that. He says, And you shall be left few in number among the nations where Yahweh drives you. See, he can reduce the numbers and he can make the numbers uh, recover. In uh, verse 28, Deuteronomy 24 and 28, And there you shall serve mighty ones. The work of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see nor hear nor eat or smell. Does that not sound like religion? And it was prophesied while they were still in the wilderness, before they went into the judges. And then when the, during the time of the judges, they still uh, rebelled and fought against each other. And Yahweh uh, then gave them the, the uh, federated nation under the king, started with King Saul and then went to King David. And then the dynasties uh, uh, split and they lasted several um, uh, hundred years. And finally he had to put them away. But this prophecy, even though it was written in uh, past times, is still active today. It's part of the problem that we have with this country today. But from there, you shall seek Yahweh your Elohim. See, wherever you're scattered, wherever you're driven, whatever trouble you get in, there you seek Yahweh your Elohim. One good example in this country is it's when these boys and girls uh, get caught up in the culture and get put in prison. That gives them a little time to seek Yahweh because they get, he gets their attention at that point. Well, the nation is the same example. The nation is out there driving, doing everything it can do, and they should think about it. He says, and find and shall find. See, if you seek Yahweh, you will find. When you search for him with all your heart, and with all your being. And see, that's what Yahweh wants his people to do, is honor him. Yahweh is not a taskmaster that's going to beat you down. Yahweh will lift you up. His Torah is not a burden. It relieves the burden. But everybody thinks it's a burden because they resist it. Anytime a, 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 you can take a horse and put him in a bridle. And when he resists that bridle, he it becomes aggravated. But when he don't resist the bridle and the bridle guides the horse, he functions and does his work and he's happy and the rider is happy. So if we thought about it that way, we could see that Yahweh is blessing us when we seek him with all our heart. Verse 30. In your distress, and this 
generation and this population is in distress. When all these words shall come upon you in the latter days. Now see, Deuteronomy is talking about the latter days. So this prophecy has not been done away with. It is still effective. And so therefore we need to think about that. He says, then you shall return to Yahweh. Return. That is the object of the believer is to return to his judgments. Walk in his judgments. Your Elohim shall obey. They say return to your Elohim and, sh and obey his voice. See, what does that mean? I think a lot of people don't really understand exactly what that means. Yahweh's voice. Have you heard it? You know, somebody's always waiting for some apparition and you, they hear something in a dream or they hear some noise and they want to hear Yahweh's voice. But when you read this book right here or you have it read to you and you hear that book, not just hear the noise and not just endear somebody reading the book, are you not are you just endear the time that it takes you to read the book? But when you're reading this book, the Holy Scriptures, and it begins to talk to you, it begins to come to understanding, and you begin to hear it, you can hear Yahweh's voice. And he tells us to do the righteous thing, walk after him. He only gives us ten simple laws to obey. It shouldn't be hard. And when we use that as the guide, the rest of it will fall into place. But you shall obey his voice. That's what he wants to hear. For Yahweh your Elohim is a compassionate El. Yahweh has much compassion. He does not forsake you. Now a lot of people might think because it didn't go right that we've been forsaken. But he hadn't forsaken us. He's still walking with us. He's guiding us through life. He does not forsake. And he can hold you in the grave at his discretion. You are still not forsaken. You nor destroy you. Yahweh is not going to destroy his people forever and just do away with them. Yahweh is uh, compassionate for his children. He says, nor forget the covenant of your fathers which he swore to them. Now this covenant, Yahweh swore to the fathers. He made the covenant and they're the recipients of it. And that's what he is going to accomplish. Now we can let it be easy or we can let it be hard, but he is going to accomplish it. In uh, Joel, chapter 2 and verse 10, Joel chapter 2 verse 10, The earth shall tremble before them, the heavens shall shake, sun and moon shall be darkened, and the stars withdraw their brightness. And Yahweh shall give forth his voice before his army, for his camp is very great. For mighty is the doer of his word. For the day of Yahweh is great and very awesome. And who does bear it? Just analyze that for a little bit. Yahweh is talking about accomplishing uh, his will in the families of Israel. Verse 12. Yet now, even now, declares Yahweh, turn to me with all your heart. Every generation, Yahweh seeks people to turn on an individual basis and on a family basis and on a national basis. But you have to start when you hear the voice. And here's how we turn with fasting. That's one of the reasons that we are commanded to fast on the Day of Atonement as a reminder of Yahweh's commandment. 
That's the only commanded fast that we are commanded to do. The rest of them are voluntary. But we can volunteer fasting and turn to Yahweh. And we can do it with weeping and with mourning. That's the reason when we pray, we have to get serious with Yahweh to pray. We can't do it with a recital of three or four quick words and go. Get down to business with Yahweh. He says, and tear your heart. Have you ever had the feeling that your heart was going to bust out when you're talking to Yahweh? Well, he says, tear your heart and not your garments. See, they used to take their shirt and tear the shirt and put sackcloth and ashes on as a symbol of humility. But that don't really get nothing with Yahweh. Yahweh wants you to have it emotionally. He says, and turn back to Yahweh your Elohim. We need to turn back and walk like he would have us walk from the scripture. Not by tradition. Not because the Jews does something or somebody else does something or not because Israel does something. But we need to turn back to Yahweh. He says, for he shows favor and is compassionate. Yahweh favors us with life. He favors us with breath. He favors us by providing us with food. And sometimes it might uh, look like that it's, uh, it's hard to get, but usually we wind up with something to eat, no matter what economic scale we're on. Even this nation, as messed up as it is, it provides welfare for some of the poor people. But most of the people that, uh, that, Yahweh, that seeks Yahweh, he provides for them. Patient. Yahweh is patient. He has waited and waited and waited and waited for his people to turn. He says, and of great kindness. See, he's still a kind father. And he shall relent concerning the evil. In other words, he's able to take away the evil that's been brought on the people if we turn back to him. It's his desire that his people are saved. Yahweh is working toward that. He's working to, uh, to get the people to hear his voice. We need to hear. And if we hear, we can learn who we are. And when we understand that we are of the Israel promise we can receive those promises. He says in verse 14, who knows? He might turn and relent. When we're seeking him with all of our heart and all of our soul and mind, he might turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him. Yahweh can give us a blessing. A grain offering and a drink offering for Yahweh your Elohim. And see, that's one of the things about our feast keeping. Yahweh teaches us when we learn the pattern of feast keeping from the very first Passover uh, uh, in, in the spring through the week of unleavened bread and we understand what the grain offering is. Yahweh uses that as a pattern of his salvation. That's the reason we should uh, memorialize those feasts. And that's the reason that uh, our congregation is practicing trying to do that. It's because we know Yahweh might relent and show us really how to do it. You know, some people don't, uh, don't think that uh, you ought to do it. Some people don't even think you should even t uh, speak his name because uh, you might be doing something wrong. But the point is that we need to follow Yahweh and let him teach us the right way. And basically what he calls in the definition of these feasts, uh, they are memorials. The word is zikrun. It shall be a zikrun in the Hebrew. And it's a memorial. So how do we keep a feast? We remember it. Just remember it in your mind. And then as the little congregations or the big congregations remember it collectively, 
it's still a memorial. There's nothing you specifically have to do. You don't have to go out and build uh, an elaborate uh, grain offering, so to speak, to do it. It's remembering it. Imagine for a moment that uh, you're standing on the Mount of Olives gazing up at Yahshua ascending into the heavens and disappearing out of your sight. You remember his final words to you. It is not for you to know the time or the epochs which the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and even to the remotest parts of the earth. And that's found in Acts 1, 7 through 8. See, to the uttermost parts of the earth. So what was happening on the day that Yahshua ascended and the people were standing there witnessing this, they were being told by the Spirit that this was going to the uttermost parts of the earth and it didn't give a time limit. So we are still at the uttermost parts of the earth. It's still going on. We need to come to the understanding of what Yahweh is talking about. Acts chapter 1 and verse 7. And he said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the set-apart spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Yehuda and Shemaron and to the end of the earth. Your first reaction might be a witness to what? To whom am I to be a witness? What is the purpose of my witness? Your mind flashes back to the time when Yahshua sent you and the other disciples out. He instructed you to go to, now catch this, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That is the target of our witness. To the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Whatever nation they're residing in today. And as you went, you were instructed to exhort them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. It is time for us to hear. It is time for us to receive. It is at hand. When we read this scripture and it begins to talk to us, it is at hand. Matthew chapter 10, verse 6. But rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. See, this is Yeshua talking to his disciples. And it's supposed to be perpetual from their, their own. He says, verse 7, And as you go, proclaim, saying, We need to proclaim it. The rain of the heavens was, has drawn near. The rain that Yahshua is going to sit the throne is drawing near. That's what we need to point out to the people so they can turn and, and listen. Verse 7. And as you go, proclaim, saying, uh, the, uh, the rain of heaven is, has drawn near. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out demons. You have received without paying give without being paid. Now, this is something that uh, could happen if we believed it enough that when we talk to people and we uh, prayed for them, that Yahweh would answer our prayers and heal them. He could manifest this. And in some cases, it has been manifested. I, I have known uh, people for over 60 years that has manifested prayers being answered by Yahweh. Well, that's simply what this is. He said, do not acquire gold and silver or copper for your money belts. Uh-oh. It's not a paid job. Or a bag for the journey. 
our two undergarments, our sandals, our staff, for the worker is worthy of his food. In other words, you don't have to buy special clothes and get dressed up and get a special vehicle and travel. You can do it when you encounter a lost sheep of the house of Israel. There might be one in your family. There might be one lives next door. There might be one lives in your town. We have the, uh, the field open, is what he is saying. He said, you say to yourself, that makes sense. I know uh, Yeshua's mission is to bring the kingdom of heaven to earth by restoring the kingdom of Israel. See, when we understand that when Yeshua finishes this thing off, he is going to completely restore the kingdom of Israel, even by raising the dead. And he is going to finish his work. He said, every kingdom requires three basic elements. A king a people, and a territory. Therefore, the restored Davidic kingdom will have Yahshua, the greater son of David, as his king, its king. And that's uh, in Ezekiel 37. Let's read uh, verse 25. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given to Yahshua, my servant, where your fathers dwelt, and they shall dwell in it. They and their children and their children's children, listen, forever. And my servant David be their prince forever. Now this is the status that the kingdom of Yahweh is going to be when it's on this earth and when he finishes it. And he wants us as believers to be the recipients of the blessings and to... Uh, believe and follow his word. In verse 26 he says, And I shall make a covenant of peace with them. Yahweh made a covenant with Abraham. Yahweh made a covenant with uh, Yaakov and changed his name to Israel. And then he has uh, manifested this covenant from generation to generation. And he is going to make a final covenant with the people in the end time. And it's going to be an everlasting covenant. And I will place them and increase them and shall place my set-apart place in their midst forever. You know, if we were standing elbow to elbow and covered the entire surface of the earth, the children of Israel would receive this blessing forever. That's what he's talking about. He says, my dwelling place shall be over them. Yahweh is dwelling over the people of Yahweh. It's not a physical thing. He is in charge. Yahweh is uh, controlling our heart, controlling our mind. He is, uh, and we are yielding to him. We no longer resist Yahweh in any fashion. He says, and I shall be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. That's what we're looking for at this time. If, do we want to be his people? If we want to be his people, then we must let him be our Elohim. We must know where Israel is today, and it is us. May Yahweh bless and keep you.